Oh hey, didn't notice you there. Well, it's a hot day, June 10th, and I decided to go out to the local park and uh, just look at some herbs. So uh, join me if you'd like to learn a bit about some herbs and see what's growing this time of year. And uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, come on chunga, come join me. A quick little message before we start the video. Uh, I wanted to say thank you for all my subscribers so far. I started this video just a year now, I believe. It's literally been one year, so one year anniversary. So thanks for everybody that subscribed and uh, I love learning from you guys. I've learned a lot just from the comments. So if you always have something to share, something that you know about the plants I show, and anything like that, throw them in the comments. I love to hear and learn more. That's what this channel is all about. Learning and growing together about learning about the wilderness, Mother Earth, and growing with her. So please do so and subscribe if you haven't already because there'll be lots more awesome wilderness garden videos to come and I want to reach a thousand subscribers soon because I want this channel monetized and to get it monetized we need a thousand subscribers so subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for a lot more exciting content. I have a whole list next to my computer of video ideas I just need to get the time to do them so stay tuned and uh, yeah enjoy the little the little herbal walk. Now this is where I catch a lot of uh, common carp. Uh, I do a lot of fishing here, but I haven't noticed any carp this year at all. So it's kind of kind of weird, kind of disappointing. But I'd like to do a carp catch and cook whenever uh, the carp come back. I might be able to find them actually up farther, farther upstream. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in some fishing. This is all burdock. And a lot of you might know burdock. It makes those big spiky things that get stuck to ya, the big burrs, and you get them in your hair and it's just nasty. I don't see any of the burrs around, but before they shoot up their flowering stalk, they are biannuals, so they grow a little floral rosette. And then the second year, they shoot up their flowering stalk. But when they're at this stage, they have a delicious, delicious edible root. And you can dig them up. They grow really, really deep down, really long tap root. And you can cook them up like a carrot or a parsnip. And oh, it's really, really good. One of the best wild vegetables out here, I'd say. You can eat the leaves, but they're insanely bitter, very bitter. But it is, burdock is known to be extremely good for the liver, very toning for the liver and flushing out all the nasties and strengthening it. So the tea of burdock root is very good to have daily if you have any, if you're wanting to, I mean, I can't prescribe it, obviously. I'm not a doctor or a herbalist. I'm just learning, but. I also highly recommend checking out Herbal Jedi's video on burdock. I can put a link in the top here. Um, he goes into a lot more thorough thorough, he talks a lot more thoroughly of the medicinal properties, because he's a herbalist from the island, so Vancouver Island. I'll have a boost of the leaf. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's just, it's too much, too bitter, too bitter. It's edible, but it's not palatable at all, in my opinion, but to each their own. Some people might like it. Some people say the bitterness is a lot less when it's early spring, but for me, it's just as bitter all year long. <laughs>
This is garlic mustard. It's uh, quite past its prime. You can see how tall they are. And of course, it's in the mustard family. You can tell by just the way the, they make these big seed pods and they come spiraling out craziness. But um, yeah, it's garlic mustard because it tastes like garlic. But it also uh, is pretty bitter. It's got that garlicky mustard essence. Let's see if we can find any good leaves. They are usually, well, they're the best when they're young, early spring. Now they're a little past their prime, so they're gonna be a lot more bitter. Let's get this a little bite. Oh, oh, yeah, that's bitter. Mm, but there's the garlic. Mm, when they're young, they're still a little bitter, but they make a really good salad green. If you don't mind the bitterness, you add that garlic essence to your salad. Oh, really good. And garlic mustard's extremely invasive, so pick as much as you want. Don't feel bad about picking too much because it's, yeah, and we need to get rid of more of it, so. Yeah, it's extremely invasive, over harvest it. So yeah, I'm not gonna discourage you over harvesting this one. It's all over the place here. And it also, uh, garlic mustard creates a chemical in its roots that prevents the growth of a lot of other plants around it. So you'll just see fields and fields of garlic mustard. And this here used to be a field, but it's now uh, trampled down. I was here in the early spring and I did do a video, but it's I wasn't able to edit it and upload it in time. And you can hear weed whackers in the background. That's lovely. And some unknown flowers. Wild wheat. Too bad I'm celiac. Beautiful catnip. Just smelling it, it's almost intoxicating. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Catnip. Mm. I don't need to harvest it from the wild anymore though because it all... It's a weed in the garden now. And the wild broccoli is all fully in flower. It's beautiful though. Past its prime, that's for sure. Well, this is a wild delicacy. Dame's Rocket. Another mustard. You can tell mustards by their four four flower petals you can see right there and they all have this mustard essence when you taste them a lot of them are really spicy but these ones are really not bad and it's not the leaves you want it's the full-blown flowers oh so good honestly one of my favorite greens well flowers I guess so good for a salad Highly recommend it. Dame's Rocket. You can see it's leaves. Really long, kind of serrated. But I highly recommend them. Very good. Wintercress. Also another mustard. And this one is insanely spicy. At first, it's like, whoa, mustard essence. A little bit of bitterness, chew it up more, and then, oh, there it is. Holy crap. It's the spiciest plant I've found so far in the wild. I'm twitching his head. Feel the buttercups. 
not edible as far as I know. Pretty sure they're poisonous. Beautiful nonetheless. Check out how big the Japanese knotweed has gotten huge. Now some people mistaken this for bamboo. I mean, look at the stalks. They're also hollow. But believe it or not, they are from Japan. They were brought over here, and now they're extremely invasive. In Australia, they actually wage war on these, and if you have them in your yard, they will come and destroy it. We'll try to at least. But these things are so powerful that they'll break through concrete. So they're extremely hard to get rid of. But uh, if you watched one of our early herbal walk videos in April, I believe, that they had these tiny shoots when the stems are really small and they're really tender and you can eat them and they taste kind of like dirty rhubarb well it turns out that japanese knotweed is in the same family as rhubarb rhubarb is in the knotweed family believe it or not so that's why they taste so similar doesn't really look like doesn't really look like rhubarb now though does it the one thing, when it starts to flower, you'll notice that they have the same flowers and the same seed pod look. So that's one of their identifying features with rhubarb. Very beautiful though. I love them, but again, they hate them in Australia. And here, they're invasive too, but they don't wreak as much havoc as they do down and... Uh... Well, that pretty much does it for this little walk in the park just something fun I haven't posted in a while I've been really busy this month and uh, June so far so yeah no thanks for watching and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and oh keep waiting for more videos because I got lots planned so lots of new things new exciting things so yeah see you in the next one and uh, peace Mmm. -hmm.